What's up guys, Arden here for Yellow House Aerial. If you're new to the channel, my name is Arden Shibley. I'm a professional drone pilot. I fly drones for film and television, commercials and local businesses. Now we fly a lot of professional equipment like the DJI Inspire 2, and we're doing our best to share that with you. Lastly, we are based in Canada. So basically if I give you any amounts, you can pretty much assume that they're in meters, igloos, moose, and Celsius. Now that comes with a few other things. We deal with Transport Canada instead of the FAA, and sometimes it gets down to 30 below here, and we still have to fly our drones. So today we're talking about, boom, the Inspire 2 Cine SSD Station Thunderbolt 3 version. So this thing is the updated version of this, the USB 3 uh, Cine SSD Station for Inspire 2. So first you'll need one of these. This is a 480 gigabyte or I guess a half terabyte basically, solid state drive for the Inspire 2. It goes in the back and the ProRes or Cinema Raw DNG or soon ProRes RAW footage all gets recorded to these. Previously, when you shoot with these cards and you decide it's time to offload the footage, whether that's to a DIT or to your own drives, it takes some time to get the footage off of there. Sometimes you'll shoot one, two, on one shoot we shot 350 gigs in an afternoon. You need to offload that and that takes time. Sometimes you don't have the time to wait for that. So DJI introduced this Thunderbolt 3 option which uses a USB connector to your computer to allow for faster transfer. So we're gonna open it up and see how fast it is. Okay. Standard DJI box here. Okay, the pull tab. And, okay, how do I get into this? There's like a thicker bit here, but it doesn't wanna, I think that that's glued. Okay. Oh. There we go, hey, it's like magic. Okay, if you get one of these, just open the big flap. Uh, pretty standard little user manual there. Probably pretty straightforward. Plug it in and it works. Declaration of conformity. Okay. And there it is. Ooh. This thing is this thing is heavy. This thing is big. DJI Cine SSD station version TG3. Okay. So hmm. So this cable initially, just what I'm looking at. This thing is big and this cable is attached. This cable doesn't come out. Um, let's see how long that is. Nice soft cable at least. Uh, yeah, that's not bad. So that'll get you to your computer or your port or whatever you're doing. For comparison, let's take a look at the old USB 3 cable. Seems to be about the same. Almost exactly. So to compare the two here, Here's the Thunderbolt 3 version, and here is the older version. So obviously it's a little bit larger, and this one actually has a fan inside to keep it cool while it works, which is interesting because at the speed that it offloads, you won't need to be using it for very long. So got the tech info on the bottom here. Nothing really new to report. It's, a, it's the same build quality and form factor as the previous one, but twice the price. But really, is it worth it? Let's find out. So I went ahead and shot 102 gigabytes on this card. I said, let's just go on the slightly high side of 100 gigs. That gives us a pretty good sustained write test to take footage off of these drives. Some folks have performed and posted results from the Red Giant speed test. When I attempted to speed test this drive via the USB 3 connection, it wouldn't allow me to speed test because there's no write permissions on this drive. This drive is read restricted, so only the drone can put files on here or erase them, which is kind of nice. If you give the card to somebody to put it in their computer, there's no way they can mess it up and remove the files. It has to be done by the Inspire 2. 
So first, a little background about the DJI Cine SSD. Inside, it's not really DJI tech at all. It's actually a Samsung 960 Pro NVMe solid state drive, which maxes out at a theoretical 28 gigabits per second, though most users have found in real world application, it maxes out around 17 and a half gigabits per second read speed. So even using practical speeds, the 17.5 gigabit per second read speed of the NVMe SSD is at least three times the theoretical 5 gigabit per second offered by USB 3. That means if DJI introduces new Cine SSDs with a faster spec, we could see increased speeds. If you're thinking about buying the Thunderbolt 3 reader, you just need to know that with the old reader, USB 3 was the bottleneck, but with the new reader, the Cine SSD is actually the weakest link. This means that the Thunderbolt 3 reader should have no problem maxing out the NVMe SSD. So we ran this test at Media Lab YYC, which is a cool co-working space that's pretty new to Calgary. We used their iMac Pro with a 3.2 gigahertz Xeon W processor, 32 gigs of RAM, a Vega 56 graphics card, and it's running High Sierra, of course. So I shot 102.24 gigabytes of data on the Cine SSD. The iMac Pro that we're using has a one terabyte internal solid state drive. Because this drive is attached directly to the motherboard, this is probably the fastest option. If you're using a different computer, if you're using one that has hard disks inside of it, or you're using external drives, that's gonna introduce other bottlenecks into the process and it might not be as fast as this iMac Pro. We went ahead and plugged the USB 3 and Thunderbolt versions of this card into the computer and we tested it both with a standard copy command and with Shotput Pro's copy and verify. Shotput Pro, if you're not familiar, is a great program that can copy and verify checksums on files. That means it takes everything that is on your media and moves it to the destination, whether that's an internal or external drive, and then it does a checksum on both and compares the two to make sure that all the data is there, nothing has been corrupted, and nothing has been lost during the transfer. It's a great way if your files are important and they're worth money, which they always are, to make sure that you don't lose anything and you can go format that card and rest easy. The standard drag and drop with the USB 3 came in at 3 minutes and 30 seconds, while the Thunderbolt 3 came in at a smoking 1 minute and 31 seconds. That's twice as fast. That's not the 3 times increase in speed that we were hoping for, but it is a sustained read and write of large files, which means that the Cine SSD is working, the reader is working, and your destination is working. Let's take a look at Shotput Pro, which includes a copy and checksum verification of all the files. This will take a little bit longer than the standard drag and drop, but it should be pretty speedy because we're doing it on an iMac Pro. The USB 3 reader came in at 4 minutes and 22 seconds, while the Thunderbolt 3 reader came in at 1 minute and 32 seconds, which is almost exactly the same as a standard Apple drag and drop. I'm not sure why Shotput Pro was much faster at moving the files with the Thunderbolt reader, but overall, the copy and checksum verification process took the exact same amount of time as just a standard copy. Either way, it's a drastic increase in speed. You can either copy them with a drag and drop, or you can copy and do checksums using Shotput Pro, both in less than half the time. Okay, I was saying half less than half. Really, it's a 130 to 134% speed increase over the older USB 3 reader. So using the numbers and speeds that we have here, let's say you shot 400 gigs on the DJI Cine SSD. The Thunderbolt 3 reader is going to transfer that data in six minutes instead of 13 minutes and 43 seconds. Not every transfer that you do from a Cine SSD is going to be to an internal SSD like on this MacBook Pro. You might be going to a USB 3 external drive or to a Thunderbolt 1 or 2 drive. So the nice thing about this Thunderbolt 3 reader is it will make sure that the reader isn't the bottleneck for transferring your footage. If you're using a Thunderbolt 1, Thunderbolt 2, or even a USB 3 connection, this reader will utilize any increase in available transfer speed. Now we do have both, but I can't use this new one with our editing computer because it doesn't have USB-C. That said, I will be taking this on any jobs that I work on because if the DIT has Thunderbolt 3, it makes the transfer so much faster and there's just no waiting around. So with the standard Apple drag and drop and Shotput Pro, the USB 3 reader scored a 3.89 and 3.8 gigabit per second transfer speed, while the Thunderbolt 3 reader scored 8.93 and 16.35 gigabits per second. Now the one thing I will say is even though the sustained transfer speed is only 130% faster, I moved a folder of 25 gigs of footage from the SSD with the Thunderbolt 3 reader, and that transfer happened in about five or six seconds. That's 30 gigabits per second. This thing is snappy. So the DJI Cine SSD Thunderbolt 3 reader, it's a little bit bigger. It's got this permanent Thunderbolt 3 USB-C cable that doesn't come off and it's more cash. 
So if you need to save yourself minutes when transferring footage off a of Cine SSD, you probably already know that you need this. If you're not so concerned about your transfer times and you'd rather save the cache, you'll get by just fine with the USB 3 Cine SSD reader. So that's basically it. That's the review. If you enjoyed this, give us a like, consider subscribing to see what else we're up to, let me know anything that I missed in the comments below. Thank you for watching, my name is Arden for Yellow House Ariel, and I will see you in the next video. Oh,